Welcome back to Low Stress Math with Mrs. Bono. We are on Chapter 1, e Algebraic Equations, and Lesson 9, Solving Real World Problems Algebraically. So, tips for solving word problems. And these go for all word problems that we're going to be solving over the next couple of months. But let's start with highlight keywords and numbers. That will help you set up an equation. <laughs> Determine the let statement and make this your variables. Make that. Okay, draw a diagram if it helps. And after solving, be sure you have answered the question asked. Because if you found out there were 37 grapes and they wanted to know the price per pound, you did not answer the question. So let's make sure we're doing that. And the last thing is, write a sentence that summarizes your solution. So let's start with a highlighter and seven less than three times a number. Seven less than three times a number is 13. Find the number. Let's start with a let statement. Let n equal a number. Now, less than switches the order. Whenever you see that word than, the order is switching. So seven less than three times a number. Three times a number is three n. Less than is minus seven. The three n would come first, then the minus seven. And the word is is an equal sign and 13. So now we just have to solve this. So start with a let statement. In this case, let n equal a number. Less than, then switches the order. So the seven and the three times the number switch. Three times the number is three n. You don't have to put a multiplication symbol or an x or anything, three n. All right, let's solve this. Add seven to both sides. And three N equals seven plus 13 is uh, 20. Divide both sides by three. And N equals 20 over three. Okay, I'm gonna check that because why not? Three times 20 over three. Minus seven equals 13. Okay, that would cancel. 20 minus seven, that's right, 13 equals 13. Now I should have grabbed my calculator to do that, but I didn't. And the last thing is, write a sentence. Hmm, the number is 20 over three. There we go, not bad, not bad. All right, so write an algebraic ex equation. When it tells you you have to write an algebraic equation or solve algebraically, you have to do that. You cannot guess and check. You can't just know the answer. You have to show the algebraic equation. So. Three times the number is represented by x. So now my let statement is going to have to go back, and instead of let n equal a number, I have to write let x equal a number because they told me that it's x. Increased by is add. So where's my highlighter? Three times the number. 
3n, oh sorry, not 3n, 3x, they told me it was an x. Increased by is add, 8 is 32. So let's write that out. 3 times the number, 3x. Increased by 8, plus 8. Is, is, is equal, there's my equal, 32. And I'm just going right along the sentence to write it. All right, now I gotta subtract eight from both sides. And three X equals 24. Divide both sides by three. X equals eight. Now I could check it. Three times eight is 24 plus another eight is 32. I could check it and write it down. It doesn't tell me I have to, but the next thing I have to do is write a sentence. The number is eight. There you go. Capital to start a sentence, period to end it. Make those English teachers proud of us mathematicians. On to the next. Oh, now we're getting real world word problems. So, Ashley, Tiffany, and Nefertiri went to GGI Fridays. After eating, they decided to divide the bill evenly. Oh, well, let's highlight that because evenly means, well, divide obviously means divide, but evenly means everybody pays the same thing. If the total bill was $72, how much did each person pay? Okay, so how many people are there? <gasps> Wait, let's count people. Ashley, Tiffany, and Nefertiri, three people. Okay, so they decided to split the bill evenly. If the total bill was $72, how much did each person pay? Well, let, um, what could we use? Hmm, P equal how much each person paid. It's always important to explain what your variable means. So now it could, there are two different ways we could write this. We could say three people times how much each person pays is equal to $72, or you could say $72 divided by three is equal to how much each person pays. Both of those will work. It doesn't matter how you do it. Just math it up good. All right, divide each side by three. And each person is going to pay uh, $24. Now look, I'm putting a dollar sign here because it says $72. I need dollars. 72 divided by three, it's still 24 equals P. Dollar sign. So each person pays $24. Here we go. Capitals, periods, happy English teachers. Here we go. The next one. Jimmy bought a baseball bat and eight baseballs. So one baseball bat and eight baseballs for $163.25. The bat costs $165.45. What does the cost of one baseball? Okay, so let's highlight some st stuff. One bat, eight balls, $163. A bat is that much. Cost of one baseball, cost of one baseball. So I'm gonna make C the cost of one baseball. Let C equal the cost of one baseball. All right, so how many baseballs? Eight baseballs. Eight times the cost of one baseball plus 
with $106.45 for the bat is going to be equal to this total, $163.25. All right, I'm going to start by subtracting $106.45 from each. And uh, I very cleverly don't have my calculator right next to me, but what I do have is my favorite cell phone, and it's gonna do some math for me. $163.25 minus the $106.45 and 45 cents for the bat, and now it is, oh, that's not money, that's 56.8. It should be 56.80. So 8C equals $56.80. I'm gonna keep the zero because I kinda need it. Now, how am I gonna figure this out? Well, I have to divide by eight. And the cost, is going to be equal to, let's divide that by 8, 7.1. Now I know it's not 7.1 because it's money. It's actually going to be $7.10. So now I have to write a sentence. Each, I'm going to go back and read this. My sentence should reflect my let statement. How much does each person pay? Each person pays $24. What's the cost of one baseball? The cost of one baseball is, so this is really the question and that's the answer. This is the question, this is my answer. The cost of one baseball is, make sure you have a unit, $7.10, period. All right, a taxi charges $2.50 for each ride plus $1.25 per mile travel. If the total charge for one ride is $11.50, how many miles were traveled? Okay, so let statement. First, let's get some highlights. $2.50 for each ride, plus $1.25 per mile, per mile. Okay, and total charge was $11.50. How many miles were traveled? And there's my let statement. Let M equal how many miles were traveled? The let statement is gonna reflect the answer and the answer is gonna reflect the let statement. So let M equal how many miles were traveled. So it's $2.50 per ride, plus, and this word per, per tells you where you're gonna put your variable. I love the word per, it helps so much, but that is actually gonna be where my variable goes. So $1.25 per mile, M is my variable equals the total charge, $11.50. Now, to solve this, I have to start by subtracting $2.50. And $1.25 per mile equals, and back here to my happy calculator, $11.50 minus $2.50. 250, but I don't get it right, is $9. Okay, now if I divide by $1.25, I will find out how many miles they went. Divided by $1.25 is 7.2 miles. There you go. That does not seem like I did that right. Wait a second, I think I mucked that up. I think I subtracted instead of dividing. Let's double check. Nine divided by $1.25 is, really? No. Something seems off, but I guess I'm right. I don't know. Yes, I am right. Okay, here we go. M equals 7.2 miles. 
So now I write my sentence, it's gonna reflect that. Uh, 7.2 miles were traveled. There we go. Not too bad. Now it's your turn. Pause the video and do the problem. I'll wait for you. Are you back? Let's do this. It costs $2 per game to bowl. Okay, there's that per again. Per. Per is where the variable goes. Plus $3 to rent shoes. Now, if you think about it, you only rent shoes once. The total spent is $11. How many games did you bowl? And this part is my let statement. Let G equal how many games were bowled? All right, so $2 per game, $2 per game, plus $3 for the shoes equals $11. Remember, only one pair of shoes per person, of course, but yeah. Minus three dollars. Two dollars per game for eight dollars. Divide by two. How many games were played? G equals four games. Okay. Okay, how many games did you bowl? I bowled. Bowled, bowled all four games. There we go. Not horrible. We'll go on to the next one. <gasps> Yay! Let's practice. That, my friends, is for you. Bye.